the last session we saw about why we should take GRE and uh, what is the use of GRE, who accepts GRE, and what else we need apart from GRE. So today also, Mika, today we will be covering a little about why GRE and what else uh, do we need along with GRE, and mostly we will be concentrating on the types of questions uh, in the all the three sections. So first five minutes or ten minutes will be what are the other things which is necessary along with GRE. And the rest 15 minutes or 45 minutes, we will be discussing the questions, which are, I mean, different types of questions and different types of patterns in GRE. So, to start with, um, these are a few tips to get into the top universities. So, basically, getting into a university in a foreign country is easy. But um, everyone wants to join some top notch universities, be it like top 50 universities or top 20 universities or Ivy League universities. So, for it, what are the requirements? The first requirements, first requirement is a perfect resume. And the resume should not be like a, a casual resume or a modern resume. It should be a perfect resume, which is made in Word document and nothing more than a Word, doc, Word document. So it should have all necessary information which you have done in college. What is your CGPA? What have you achieved in college? What are your extracurricular activities and other things? So the next major factor is publishing papers. So while we are studying in I mean, college, uh, staffs or professors ask us to publish many papers as possible, but we hardly care about it. Uh, that is one of the mistakes which I did uh, when I'm in college, which was not publishing as much as papers as possible. I did it only while I was studying fourth year. So I encourage you students, if you're studying second year or third year, this is not too late, but this is not too early. Uh, you should start publishing as many as papers as possible, but uh, make sure that the papers which you're publishing are really worth it and uh, it has some uh, really good contents. So, and uh, make sure that uh, it has been guided by a professor and it has been um, undergone through many reviews and you are submitting the paper in a very good journal. So, next. Our next important thing is if you are getting into some, if you are searching for some courses related to computer science or IT or artificial intelligence, machine learning, as a matter of fact, what you need to do is you need to do as many as possible projects and upload them to GitHub and make it open source. And you should also make sure that the projects are licensed. Um, maybe the license is a very big word, but it's, I mean, cost, it's free of cost. You can get it anywhere in GitHub itself and make sure you do create some GitHub pages for it. And then, uh, LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is also another major factor which is going to contribute to your higher studies admission. Um, maybe we all know that LinkedIn is a source where we can find jobs or communicate with people. But LinkedIn is also a very big source to communicate with professors in those universities. Uh, majorly, we do need recommendation even from that college. So what I advise is once you start your application, before submitting it, contact some professors of that university, particularly related to your course, and uh, who are in line with your research interest and speak with them, contact them, ask them what they are I mean, working on and make sure, I mean, like, uh, do some conversation like you want to contribute to their project or something like that, so that it will be very helpful for that link, LinkedIn will be a great help. And then apart from this, the rest of them are basic requirements. You need a well-constructed SOP where you showcase all your talent and uh, make sure that you're not too desperate to get into that university. What you need to make sure is, you should say that uh, I'm really willing to join universities because it's a prestigious university and I can develop my skill along through which uh, I can develop my skills too. So this is what you need to say. I mean, you need to say, and uh, you should not sound too desperate while writing an SOP. And LOR, make sure that you are getting an LOR from three faculties, at least three faculties from college or uh, wherever you did your paperwork. So. What exactly you need to do is you need to get a letter of recommendation, at least one letter of recommendation from your project guide or the research journal guide. And the other two um, from faculties who you want to get it from. And then, so to get into some top colleges, the basic requirement is GRE and IELTS or GRE and TOEFL. So make sure you have some 330 plus scores in uh, GRE and uh, in IELTS some uh, 7.5 or 8 plus bands. And the another, this is the most important requirement out of all, which is good grades in college. So make sure that you have a really good grades in college. If you don't have a great grades in college, at least make sure from now on you're getting good grades because what actually matters is how did you perform the last two years of the college? That's what matters the most. So make sure you have really good marks in the last 
like uh, four semesters in our college and make sure you do as many as possible projects and upload them to GitHub or some uh, necessary, particularly uh, perfect medium. If you can also start blogs and uh, try to impress uh, other academicians, I mean, uh, over there in the college and they can uh, do more than that. So and these are the basics. So try to do them. And uh, yeah, from now we can just go into the exact content uh, about what we are going to see today. So, so as we already discussed yesterday, uh, there are like three topics which are mainly important, which is analytical writing, quantitative problems, and verbal questions. So, uh, how exactly do these problems look, and what exactly will we face in quantitative problems, and how exactly will the English questions be in verbal? We'll see one by one. We'll go section by section, starting with analytical writing. So we have two different things in analytical writing. One is issue-related topics, and another one is argument-related topics. So as soon as you start your exam, the first question which appears to you is an issue-related topic. And the second one is argument-related topic. We'll start with an issue-related topic. So how much, how much or how big should you write? It should be a 500-word essay, so it is not fixed. You can write more or you can write less, but make sure your content is proper. Uh, it can be separated into paragraphs, so make sure that you at least write four paragraphs which, uh, with uh, 125 words each. And uh, if you're not able to maintain a paragraph, at least try to maintain the sentence, which is between 30 to 35, and uh, 15 to 20 words uh, in each sentence. Don't make the sentence too short or do not make it too large. So. Uh, I have taken these questions exactly from the GRE website. So these are the training questions. Uh, please don't think the exact questions will be like this. These are like very, very simple questions. The exact questions are going to be really difficult in GRE exam. So just for explanation, I have taken these questions. Uh, so this is the first issue topic. And uh, let, let me read the question and uh, explain you how exactly to write the answer. So if you can see here, the issue topic starts as as people rely more and more on the technology to solve problems, the ability of human to think for themselves will surely deteriorate. So what they are trying to say is, um, as more humans tend to rely on technology, as we do now, we are uh, just using the medium of a technology to communicate with each other. What it says, uh, it is saying that the ability of us to think will reduce. This is the issue topic. And what you should write, uh, you cannot construct your own topics and write whatever you want. So read the next small paragraph to understand what exactly they want you to write. And that's what you should write. It might differ from a section to section. So make sure you read it properly. So what they have said is write a response in which you discuss the extent to which you agree or disagree with the statement and explain your reasoning for the position you take. So while reading the first sentence, what we understand is they are giving us the freedom of what we can write. This does not happen in all the cases. So in this case, we can write whatever we want. We can agree to it or we can disagree to it. So we should make sure that we are standing along with it. Okay. So, and what they are saying is in developing and supporting your position, you should consider ways in which the statement might or might not hold to and explain how these considerations shape your, shape your position. So what you need to write is first paragraph, paraphrase the issue. The second paragraph is state your point. So stating your point means what do you stand for? Do you accept the issue or do you oppose the issue? This is what you should say in the second paragraph. Uh, you should not say that, that I oppose the issue. You should articulate it in a different words. Like you should write in a paragraph and make sure that you are saying what you want to say, that you want to oppose the issue or support the issue. And the third paragraph is you should say why you are opposing or supporting the issue. And the fourth paragraph is some example which should be a real life example and not a made up example. So if you're not sure what example to write, better leave that uh, place. Like uh, leave that place in sense, I mean, leave that paragraph. And then you can go to the next paragraph. So the next paragraph should be a conclusion paragraph where you should support the last line of the question, which is uh, you should consider ways in which the statement might or might not hold true. So you should justify that whatever you have said this right from your point of view. So this is how exactly you should write each paragraph. And uh, you can see a screen now here, right? This is how your exact GRE test will also look. Exactly, a Ditto Xerox copy of this will be a, I mean, uh, in your GRE exam. 
So GRE is an online test. If you people don't know, or uh, this is the first time you are hearing about it, GRE is an online test, and you should be typing. Uh, as we do in Word document, what happens is it will show us some warning date if we do some spelling mistake. This will not show you any. Uh, uh, this will not show you any warnings that the spelling is wrong or not. Whatever you write is the spelling. So if you want to make sure that you are typing well, and the spellings are not wrong, it will come only with the full perfect practice. So what I will ask you to do is practice really well, because typing is difficult for few people, and I know that because even I faced the same issue when I was in first year or in twelfth standard. Typing was really difficult to me. So if you if you are not familiar with typing really fast, uh, what I will ask you to do is first take a typing lesson. It will for sure help you, and uh, you can complete the essays even really fast. We will have thirty minutes for this single section. What I will ask you to do is, uh, you need to complete this section within twenty to twenty-five minutes maximum, and then take five minutes to read the passage and five minutes to paraphrase it. Because while we are writing it for the first time, we will not be too much cautious to write it in a perfect sentence. So you should read up. I mean, you should write the whole essay, read it again, and paraphrase it and read it again. So you will need a solid ten minutes to correct whatever you have written. So make sure that you complete the essay within twenty minutes, and then. Uh, Go to the next one. So, I actually said. I mean, I remember saying that there will be two essays, right? Yeah, there is going to be two essays. The first essay will be given thirty minutes, and the second essay will be given thirty minutes. But you cannot switch between the essays. If you start this essay, you need to complete it within the half hour, and then go to the next essay. So, as soon as you complete it, you need to click the next over here, and then go to the next one. So, the next one is an argument topic. Uh, in the issue topic, you had freedom to express whatever you want, and you can support it or oppose it. But argument is different. We will see what exactly it is, and the constraints for arguments is also same. It should be a 500 word essay. It should be a four paragraph, and it should have 30 to 30 page sentence, 15 to 20 words each. The constraints are same, but the question is going to be different. So this is an example question of an argument. Here they will state an argument. About, I mean, they will state a fact about something. Let me read the fact. In surveys, Monsoon City residents rank water sports, which are swimming, boating, and fishing, among their favorite recreational activities. The Monsoon River, following through the city, is rarely used for these pursuits. However, and the city park department devotes little of its budget to maintaining the riverside recreational facilities. For years, there have been complaints from the residents about the quality of the river's water and the river's smell. In response, the state has recently announced plans to clean up the Monsoon River. Use of the river for the water sports is therefore sure to increase. The city government, uh, the city government, should for that reason devote more money in the year's budget to riverside recreational facilities. So here they are stating the fact that the Monsoon City resident has been ranked top in terms of swimming, boating, and fishing. But what the fact is saying is the Monsoon River is not clean. And uh, anyone in the city rarely uses it, and the maintenance is really bad. So this is what they are stating. So what exactly you should do is you should not consider anything on your own or write anything what you feel. What you need to do is you you should articulate the same paragraph and express what they are trying to say in that. So if you read the exact uh, exactly what they want you to do here is write a response in which you examine the stated or the unstated assumptions of the arguments. <coughs> so what you need to do is. You should examine what they are stating or what they are not stating, what they are covering the back. Be sure to explain how the arguments depend on these assumptions and what the implications are for the arguments. If the assumption, I mean, if the assumption prove unwarranted, what you exactly know need to do here is read the question properly multiple times. So take at least five minutes to read the question and uh, understand what exactly they are st stating as an argument. And write exactly about the arguments. So again, here the first paragraph is going to be paraphrasing the argument, and the second paragraph is going to be a half of paraphrasing the argument, and the second half is should be what you are going to proceed with writing. So say for example, if you are going to start with what are the assumed facts, you should start with the facts. You should start with the facts and explain why these facts have been assumed or not assumed. And the next paragraph should be the opposite of the previous paragraph. So, if you say about the assumed facts which are there in this uh, exact argument, then the next paragraph should be the unassumed facts. What are the facts should be considered? And the fourth one should be explaining again the paragraph, justifying the above two paragraphs. 
and the last one is a very small confusion which can be just few lines or just three to four lines maximum concluding that uh, whatever is in the paragraph is holds true and you can complete the whole question so exactly this is how the argument question works moving forward we will see what exactly will be that quants and uh, verbal section so yesterday i mean uh, you people asked me what are the different topics which comes in quants i mean i simply said that there will be five topics but those five topics will be divided into very large vast amount of group so let us see what are the topics they are so quants topics these are our exact and standard question if you people remember so the first one is equation it can be a single equation or a equation with two unknown variables or sometimes three unknown variables or attempts four unknown variables and then the next one is ratios and fractions the third one is progression and sequence venn diagram geometry inequality and modulus exponents numbers percentage rate time and work interest coordinate geometry statistics permutation and combination and probability these are the 15 topics only these are the topics the questions will come from in gre there are no other topics from which we, you can expect a question so you need to be prepared i mean 100 percentage fully prepared with all these 15 topics with all the formulas so we'll see a few example questions from these 15 topics the like, uh, i'm not covering all the 15 topics i will show you the different kinds of question and a uh, few topics which are here so uh, before you go into like a uh, say for venn diagram how can the questions be so what they would have done is they would have given you a venn diagram which is in a circle given lines something like that and they will ask you to predict some results over it or they will ask you to um, do a greater than or equal to something like that that's how venn diagram will be and in geometry they will give you spheres ask you to find the area at times they will give you two spheres and uh, ask you to find the best fitting square and say d each square it can be anything from these things so we'll start with a few basic questions so again these questions are taken from the gre website which uh, comes along with the practice test you can access the practice test only if you are registered for an exam so i took it i mean i took one of my friends accounts who has already been registered for an exam which is coming up in few months so i took it from him and i took few screenshots to show it to people and uh, again it's just a note remember the questions will not be like this the questions will be more difficult than this so say for example these questions which i'm going to show are really simple which we have already seen but remember that the questions are really going to be difficult more than this these are just example questions so this is actual actually a geometry questions so if you i mean i don't know if you remember or not remember or not last time when we were taking class i mean like uh, when i was taking the session i said you that uh, there will be four types of question in uh, math so the sorry two types of question in math one is the equality question and another one is multiple choice question so this is the equality kind of question if you see this oval shape in any question it is called the equality question so exactly this is the question if you see this figure which is a uh, pqr it's a triangle and uh, qs it's a line which is separating the triangle into two this is an exact question so if you see below quantities a and quantity b so quantity a is p and s quantity b is r and s so this question in this question what exactly they are asking is the relationship between quantity a and quantity b which is ps and rs which is a bottom part of a triangle divided by the point s i mean qs okay so what we exactly need to do is establish a relationship between ps and sr uh, if you see they have not given us any measurement or they have not stated what kind of triangle it is so if they have given a figure like this we should not assume this is the original shape of the figure it can be of any shape it could be isosceles triangle or it could be some equilateral triangle or it can be anything this line can be in exactly this angle or it can come along with the pq line or it can come along with the qr line we cannot say exactly what is the angle or what the dimensions are so in this case we are unsure that what is the length of any line in this figure so we cannot say that the ps is greater than rs or the ps is smaller than sr or the two quantities are equal we can see that the ps and the sr seems to be equal but uh, until and unless we can prove it clearly we cannot say it the only uh, thing which they have said is pq equal to qr 
that does not hold true like a, that does not say anything about ps or sr so in this kind of question the exact answer is the relationship cannot be determined from the information given so you cannot always choose uh, if you don't know the answer you cannot always choose the relationship cannot be determined but you should think before you answer in this case we are not able to establish any information between ps and rs so that is why in this case the answer is the relationship cannot be determined from the given information so this is one kind of geometry question let us go into another simple question so like a i promise you guys these questions are not going to come in gre for by any chance or by any means because these are like damn simple questions um, as you can see this is a, again a very simple question where 5x plus 32 equal to 4 minus 2x so as i was saying in the topic section equations can have single unknowns two unknowns and three unknowns so this is a single unknown question single unknown questions always will be easy so here what we need to do is 5x plus 32 equal to 4 minus 2x so in this case what we need to do is take the two other side and 32 to the other side uh, so it will be 7x is equal to 20 minus 28 if i'm not wrong so what we need to do here is uh, x is equal to minus 28 divided by 7 which is minus 4 basically so in this case the answer is going to be minus 4 if you know that is the perfect answer just click it and go to the next one okay and uh, the next one just a second yeah <laughs> and uh, yeah just a second guys i will give you an uh, in me like a what all to do so if you see in the top there will be an exit section if you give exit section it will go out of the section so or never do that and here there is a calculator so for these kinds of problem you can use a calculator and do multiplication or addition fast but uh, trust me it's going to make you slow because the calculator which they are going to provide is really bad and you can mark this question so say for example if you want to skip this question for now you can skip it and go to the next question you can mark it and later you can come and come and uh, revisit it or you can click review that you are given an answer but you are unsure about what answer like uh, it could be or Uh, you should you want to recheck then you can click a review over it so if you have any doubts about how exactly you should use this you can click help and uh, get to know it or uh, or the back and next is to switch between the questions so i uh, will just see this question a car got 33 miles per gallon using a gasoline at the cost of 2.95 per gallon so if you fill a uh, if you fill gasoline in a car for 2.95 dollars it will go for 33 miles this is the statement and what is exactly is the question is approximately what was the cost in dollars of gasoline used in driving for 350 miles so uh, how many uh, gasoline or uh, how many dollars should we fill the car to go for 350 miles so it's simple what we need to do here is 350 divided by 33 so 350 divided by 33 it will come around something like uh, 10.6 i guess Uh, 10.6 or 10.5 i'm not pretty sure so 10.6 or 10.5 just assuming that are uh, 10.6 and what we need to do is multiply the 10.5 with 2.95 so we will get the answer somewhere near 30 plus or minus something around 30 so the closest answer to us is 30 so why i'm saying it's a closest answer like you will perfectly get 30 if you do the math properly but we are not going to do the math properly what we are going to do is we are going to save time by escaping the calculator by not using the calculator so do any mathematics like whatever you want come to the closest answer and choose the closest answer uh, which is that is the option so in this case our closest answer is 30 and yeah 30 is the right answer uh, i mean at the end of session i will share few links to with kartikeya sir and i will also share, share these slides with these questions which will be helpful for you so moving forward to the next question <laughs> okay so if you see square boxes it means multiple options are there you need to select multiple options um, see here uh, the question is which two of the following numbers have products between minus 1 to 0 indicate both the numbers so what you need to do is you should try out the different combination and select two numbers which combinations come very less to uh, between 0 and 1 <coughs> so if you see minus 20 and minus 10 Uh, which is something around what or two so it's not the answer so 20 by 10 which is 0.5 again that is not the answer um, 2 power minus 4 3 power minus 
again it is not between minus 0 I mean minus 1 and 0 so it's a positive number so you can neglect it and minus 20 and uh, 2 power minus 4 uh, I guess it's uh, bigger than uh, some yeah it is something more than 100 or something so you can try the answer so if you see minus 10 and uh, 2 power minus 4 the answer is coming uh, something around uh, minus 0 0.6 if I'm not wrong so yeah that is the answer so basically minus 10 divided by 16 that will be the case so since minus 10 divided by 16 it's something around uh, 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 or 0 0.5 something so your answer in this case must be you should select two options minus 10 and 2 power minus 4 so that is the correct answer if you even left out a single option in this this uh, mark for this whole section will be considered as zero so you should precisely select these two options to get the full marks for this particular question moving forward to the next question even uh, this is another one kind of question so which of the following integers are multiple of both two and three okay so again this is a very simple question you should not see two multiple separately and three multiple separately what you need to do is make sure that both the numbers are multiplied by divisible by two and three or multi I mean, multiples of two and three in this case the only three numbers are 12 18 and 36 because eight is only by two 9 is only by 3 and 21 is also is only by 3. So we need to select other three options which is 12, 18 and 36. Even by chance if you miss out a single option again you are not getting any marks for this. So make sure that uh, you spend some time in this and select. So again guys I am saying it again and again the questions are not going to be like this. The questions are going to be more difficult. So I will be sharing a link with you. That link will have the difficult questions. If you have any doubts in those links you can directly contact me. I will leave my uh, uh, I will leave my mail ID and the LinkedIn uh, ID so that you can contact me whenever you want. So moving forward to the next type of question. So this is a blank question where you need to write the answer. So here, <coughs> uh, here they say one pen cost 0 0.25 and uh, one marker cost a dollar of I mean, 35 penny. At those costs, what is the total cost of 18 pens and 100 markers? So this is like actually simple. So what happens for markers, it's going to be 35. And uh, for pen, which is uh, 18 into 0 0.25. So for these cases, if you're not able to calculate uh, in the mind, what you can exactly do is you can use a calculator and calculate it fast. So if I'm not wrong, 18 into 0 0.25 is 4.5 I'm not yeah it is 4.3 so in this case our answer is going to be 39.05 uh, I have an answer key in the last so it will be helpful for you people when you are going to going to go through the slides so the answer is 39.05 in this case so again uh, in the previous question we just had a single blank here we are going to have two it can be multiple blanks we cannot say how many blanks it's going to be at most it's going to be just three blanks so you need not worry about four or five blanks so here the question is rectangle r has a length of 30 and a width of 10 a square s yes, has length 5 what is the ratio of perimeters s yes, uh, which is square to the perimeter r so perimeter is very simple that uh, for rectangle it is 2 into l plus r i mean like a uh, length uh, plus width yeah length plus width and for square it is uh, four into sides so for square it is 20 and for rectangle which is 30 plus 10 uh, 40 40 into 2 is 80 so uh, it is basically what 20 divided by 80 which is 1 by 4 so your yeah, answer should be 1 by 4 and not of course not 40 by I mean, uh, 20 by 80 if you're writing 20 by 80 it's a wrong answer you're not getting any mark for it you simplify all the decimal as possible they are not going to ask you to write uh, uh, anything over there so if you see the definitions down here they will uh, mention what exactly they require as an answer so in this case the answer is one by four so moving forward to the next question <coughs> a merchant made a profit of five dollars on sales of a sweater that cost a merchant fifteen dollars so what they are saying is if a merchant is selling a sweater for fifteen dollars he is making five dollars profit out of it what is the profit expressed as percent of the merchant's cost so if a merchant is selling uh, for $15 is better and he's getting 5% profit, which is exactly 33.3%. If you ask me how I'm calculating 33.3%, um, 
you can simply see that uh, 15 divided by 5 is 3 times, just 3 times. Or what you can do is do the reverse math, which is uh, 5 divided by 15. If you are going to cancel it out, it's going to be 33.3. No, it's not going to be 33.3. Uh, it's going to be 0 0.33. You need to multiply it with 100 to make it into percentage because we have asked it in percentage. So they have asked you to nearest to the whole percentage. So since they have asked you to nearest to the whole percentage, our answer is going to be 33.3. The nearest integer is 33. So your answer is your answer must be just 33. Even if you are giving going to give 33.3, it is going to accept the answer, but you are going to get zero marks because they have asked you to nearest whole percentage which is 33 which is going to be 33.51 then it should be 34 even that 51 matters you should go to 34 so make sure that uh, you are reading the questions really carefully so yeah this is the data interpretation questions which i was saying yesterday <coughs> if you see first if you get these kinds of questions be sure that there is going to be at least three questions related to this single table. So spend some time on this table before going into the question. So if you see the question, the annual percent change in dollar amount of sales at five retail stores from 2006 to 2008. So if you see, there are five stores, which is P, Q, R, S, and T, and the percentage change, first one is from 2006 to 2007, and the second one is from 2007 to 2008. So the things you need to understand here is, at the start of 2006, there is some rate, which we don't know which they did not specify. So this 10 percentage increase is at the end of 2007. So say for example, uh, if the P had a profit of 100 or the whole amount of 100, the profit is going to be 10. Uh, the profit or the sales increment is going to be 10. So which is going to be 110. Then starting of 2006, it's 100. And at the end of 2000, in the starting of 2007, it is 100. At the end of 2007, it's 110. And in the next case, Q, in the starting, it's going to be 100, and the, in the end, it is going to be 80. So similarly, you need to make some assumption in these cases. So after you clearly understand the question, go to the next actual question, which is related to this data. So if you see, if the dollar amount of sales at the store P was $800,000. So in store P, in the starting of 2006, which they were mentioned here, I mean, uh, at the end of 2006, is $800,000. What was the dollar amount sales at the store in 2008? So they have mentioned $800,000 here. The $800,000 increased by 10 percentage at the end of 2007. So it is going to be $880,000 at the end of 2007. And here, if you see, it is reducing by again 10 percentage. So the 10 percentage of uh, $8,800 is, oh, sorry, $880,000 is uh, $80,800, if I'm sorry, yeah, $80,800. So if you're going to subtract $80,800 from $80,000, it is going to be um, $792,000. So in this case, our answer is going to be $792,000. Sometimes what we will do is, we'll just reduce the 10 percentage from this and uh, write that as an answer. Otherwise, what we will do is we will increase 10 percentage from $800,000, make it uh, $880,000, and just reduce again $8,000, I mean $80,000 from it, and write the answer as $800,000, which is wrong. So make sure you are selecting the right answer, which is $792,000 in our case. So similarly, they will not give this $800,000 in all the questions. Uh, as an example, you will see the next one. If you see here, <coughs> sorry. The question is, at store T, the dollar amount of sales for 2007 was what percent of the dollar amount of sale in 2008? And they have asked you to give the answer nearest to 0 0.1 percentage. So in this question, what they have done is they have not specified like uh, what exactly is the I mean amount they have used. So what we need to do here is we need to make a lot of assumptions here. So consider that our starting amount is 100 and the store is T. The dollar amount of sales for 2007 was what percentage of 2008? So consider that our starting amount at the end of 2006 is 100 and it has been increased by 17 percentage. 
and came to 117 at the end of 2017 2007 so that is the price which is 117 we need to compare with the reduced price of minus 8 percentage so minus 8 percentage of uh, just a second <coughs> I mean, uh, what we need to do is from 107 percentage, uh, 117 percentage, we need to reduce the 8 percentage. Oh, sorry, this the, yes, I made a mistake. So consider that the 17 percentage, right? After the increase of 17 percentage, the amount is 100 and reduce the 8 percentage from it, which will be 92. So you need to calculate the percentage difference between 92 and 100 from 92. So from 92 to go to 100, the percentage difference is 8.7 percentage. I actually pre-calculated it. I am not calculating it now. You can calculate it by yourself. Uh, just by doing 100 divided by uh, so if it's very it's a very simple math. I will just say you 100 divided by 92 uh, into 100. So if you are going to do it, the answer will be uh, 100 and just a second. I forgot. It's going to be 108 percentage. 108.7 percentage. So your yeah, exact answer is for this question is going to be 108.7 percentage. So that is how you need to write the percentage. You should just not write 8.7 percentage. Now most of them will write 8.7 percentage. They are not asking you to give the increase or decrease percentage. What they are asking to give you is the whole percentage. So you need to multiply it by 100 and say the whole percentage is 108.7 percentage. So that is how you need to answer this question. So moving forward. To the next one yeah <coughs> so this is the final question based on the information given which of the following statement must be true indicate all the statements so we will read one statement based statement for 2008 the dollar amount of sales at store R was greater than at each of the other four stores so if you see they have not given any explicitly what was the sales in any store so we cannot hold true or we cannot say this is false. We don't know. We simply don't know what exactly the answer is. So we need to skip this. We need to select it. And uh, going forward to the next one, uh, the dollar amount, uh, just a second, guys. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so, so the next option, the dollar amount of sales at the store is for 2008 was 22% less than for 2006. For this one, we need to calculate. So if you see what they are saying is the store is. Uh, the store is for 2008, 22% less than 2006. So for 2006, we will start with 100. Uh, if we start with 100, what happens is it is reducing by 100, I mean 7 percentage. So if you reduce by 7 percentage from 100, it is going to be 93. Then again, it is reducing by 15 percentage. From 93, if we reduce the amount by 15 percentage, it is going to be 79.05. So the overall decrease from 2016 to 2008 is 21, uh, which is minus 21.95. But what they are saying here is 22 percentage less than. But here it is exactly 21.95 and not 22. So even this option is wrong. So we will not select the first two option and we will go to the third option. The third option is the dollar amount of sales at the store R for 2008 was more than 17 percentage greater than that of 2006. So guys, you need to understand the difference between the last two options. Here, in the first option, they are saying the dollar amount of sales at the store is for 2008 was 22 percentage less than 2006. So they are specific about 22 percentage here. But in the next option, they are not specific. Uh, they are, what they are saying is the dollar amount of sales at the store are for 2008 was more than 17 percentage. So this option, the last option denotes anything greater than 17 percentage. But the second option denotes perfectly, absolutely equal to 22. So that's why we did not select the I mean, I mean, second option. So if we see for the, the third option in the store R, they are going to ask the same percentage. If you go to the store R, initially it increases by 5 percentage. So we will keep 100, increase it by 5 percentage, which is 105 and then increase it by 12 percentage we will end up getting a 127.15 percentage so the overall percentage increases 27.15 percentage which is of course greater than 17 so we will only select this final option we will only select this final option and then we will move forward to the next question so actually there will be 20 questions in this test uh, question there are only uh, 11 so even i'm stopping it with 11 considering the time so Next, we will go to uh, verbal. So before going to verbal, do people have any doubts till now? 
uh, I can see that there are only one guy is there. So, do you have any doubt or, um, or just can I go further? Yeah, let me assume that there is no doubt. Uh, just for confirmation, your people can still see my screen, right? Yeah, I will assume that you can see my uh, screen. <coughs> so moving forward to the verbal topics. So I just have six questions and I want to discuss them uh, in a deep way. So here there are going to be two types of questions. One is sentence completion and another one is reading comprehension. Today we'll start with reading comprehension and we'll go through three questions or two questions and then go to the sentence completion. So there are again two types of questions in sentence completion. We'll get to know them. So here, the first question. This is a reading comprehension question. So for reading comprehension question, you will get about three to four questions for a single paragraph. So make sure you really understand the paragraph. Well. I mean, not really understand the paragraph. Well. At least read the paragraph twice. Otherwise, you will not be able to answer the questions. So uh, let me read the paragraph for you. Reviving the practice of using elements of popular music in classical composition, an approach that has been in hibernation in the United States during the 1960s. Composer Phillips Glass, uh, born in 1937, embraced those features of the popular music in his composition. Glass based two symphonies on music by rock musician David Browning and Brian Yeo, but the symphony sound is distinctively his. Popular element do not appear out of the place in Glass's classical music which from its early days has shared certain harmonies and rhythms with rock music. Yet this use of popular elements has not made Glass a composer of popular music. Uh, his music is not a good version of popular music package to attract classical listeners. It is high art for listeners uh, stepped into rock rather than the classics. So this is the paragraph. Uh, even if you don't understand, it doesn't matter, but read it twice. Uh, at least you will remove a few words from uh, it. So next, read the question. If you see, this is a multiple choice question, but uh, where you can choose more than one option. So read the question again, for, I mean, properly. Uh, the passage suggests that Glass's work display which of the following qualities. Read all the three options before answering. So if you read the first one, the return of use of popular music in classical composition. If you clearly see the passage, there's nowhere it's mentioned that the return of use of popular music in classical composition. Yeah, so it means this option is rolled out. So go to the next one. An attempt to elevate rock music to an artist, it is more closely approximate than that of classic. Even though the paragraph somewhat relates to this topic, they have not explicitly mentioned that this holds true. So even in our case, this is going to be false. So do not select it and go to the next one. A long-standing tendency to incorporate elements of two apparently disparate music styles. So in this this option, this option could be true. Because in the passage, we can see that they are comparing two different whole styles of music. And uh, it doesn't have a very good audience. So yeah, since these points match with the sentence, I mean, match with the paragraph, this one is correct. And uh, yeah, this is the only right option for this question. So uh, before moving to the next question, um, while doing a reading comprehension, make sure that uh, if it's explicitly mentioned in the paragraph, then it is a correct answer. Unless and until you are not able to find any particular line which exactly holds true with your answer, do not select it. Do not assume anything. Just read the paragraph, make sure that options are there, then select it. Otherwise, do not do anything. So, moving to the next question. Okay, so in this, uh, if I'm not wrong, in this, if I'm not wrong, we'll be citing a single option. So if you see the passage addresses, which are the following issues related to class use of popular elements in this classical composition. Again, read the paragraph, read each and every option. The best way to answer is rejection and selecting only the correct answer. If you, if you are not able to select the correct answer, first eliminate the options which are not possible and then go to the next I mean, next option. So here, the first option is 
how it is regarded as by listeners who prefer rock to the classic next one how it has affected the commercial success of the classic music uh, nothing is said about these two points in the third one whether it has contributed to level of uh, interest among other composers and using popular elements in their composition the last one whether it has had a determinant determinant effect on class reputation as a composer of classical music and the last one is whether it has caused certain glass work to be derivative uh, derivative in quality so uh, <laughs> to be frank i don't have much time because it's already 547 uh, let me give the answer and go to the next one maybe we can um, contact our linkedin or something to get clarify on the options so for this question the answer is the last one so considering the time i'm going to move a little fast here so there will be questions like select the sentence that distinguish two ways of integrating rock and classical music so what you need to do is uh, you can move your mouse i mean hover your mouse towards each sentence and select the sentence which you think is the right answer so in this case the correct answer is the last option so if you see uh, the last option this music is not a version of popular music package to attract classical listeners listeners uh, it is high of uh, it uh, it is a high art for listeners stepped into rock so it compares classical and rock so this is the correct answer uh, so you should select the last sentence and you can just move to the next question so i was saying sentence completion questions right so the sentence completion questions can be of three types the one with three blanks which are going to be easy the one with two blanks which are going to be okay and the last one is single blank which are going to be kind of difficult so again reading here uh, just read the whole sentence um, considering the time i'm not going to do that so just read the whole sentence uh, try to answer from reverse trying to answer from reverse will give you clear clarity because by reading the first sentence we cannot put the word which we like or which we think it's matching the sentence a lot so go from reverse read first read fully go from reverse where you will understand what exactly is happening here and then you can start answering the question so i'm just moving forward to the next one so i skipped the two part question so this is a single question in part of the arctic the land grades into land fast uh, iso dash that you can walk off the coast and not know you are over the hidden sea so what exactly the question is saying is if you are there in arctic even if you are going to walk over the sea you will not get to know that you are walking over the sea so what exactly can fill in the blank permanently they are saying the ice is permanently there so which is not true and uh, imperceptibly so what exactly that uh, imperceptibly means is uh, it means uh, different different things but in this particular case it means that the change is so gradual or so slight that you are not able to understand irregularly so if it's irregular you will get to know that uh, it is uh, in water um, so relentlessly or precociously like uh, that doesn't exactly go with the sentence so here the answer is imperceptibly is the correct answer so again so this is the last type of question which you can expect in verbal so what exactly the question is uh, so let's believe that the people who dash compliments uh, do so in order to be praised so exactly who is a cynic cynic is a person who believes that people are motivated purely by self interest rather than anyone else complimenting them or getting some awards so uh, here the key is cynic and uh, we should compare these words I mean I mean uh, we should compare I mean we should select the correct answer comparing it with cynic so in this option it's we should select two synonyms not exactly synonyms which exactly means the same or somewhat means the same so if you see the options there will be six options in which there will be two pairs uh, say for example uh, here the pairs are uh, just a second uh, here the pairs are grasp and understand which rate something with understanding or getting towards you and uh, next to two options um, we the uh, next two options what are the next two options so the next two options are deflect and shrug off so which is going away from the way which you are already taking so these two are the pairs and the other two are conjure up and uh, covid which does not uh, match with any other word but in this case uh, the exact correct answers are deflect and shrug off so this is how you need to select um, so we are selecting deflect and shrug off because grasp or understand doesn't make any sense in this paragraph uh, it actually holds false to what actually is explained so the correct answer is deflect and shrug off so that is how exactly this is going to work <coughs> so
so answer key uh, i have attached the answer key you can go through it later when you get a ppt and yeah so this is my mail id anyway i'm going to get the ppt and the links uh, i will forward a mail to kathi and sir he will forward it uh, to you it will have a lot of uh, resources which will have difficult questions uh, which are totally uh, different from what we saw today and uh, you will be getting those links and uh, you can practice using this links uh, what i will suggest is if you have plans of taking gre if i'm not wrong you can register even before two or three months register for the exams you will get a lot of preparing materials they will of course give you two books uh, two giant books which will have a lot of uh, questions and that alone is not enough but uh, it is yeah it will uh, it has a very good set of questions you can practice from them uh, and you can uh, there are many youtube channels which you can uh, refer and uh, which you can get to know a lot of things uh, and you can practice um, what i will ask you to do is concentrate more on the verbal part as indians or uh, by native you will be doing good in math but the english is a weak spot so what i will ask you all to do is practice more with the verbal part the english can be taken care of like uh, i mean the math can be taken care of first practice for verbal next start with aw and you can put the quant in last but by last i don't mean that uh, you can spend uh, i mean like uh, it is enough to spend only 3 days and go write the exam of course it is not enough you at least need few months for verbal a month for aw and at least few months again for quant because quant has a lot of topics to cover and uh, but simple to cover but verbal has a very small amount of topics to cover but the number of words which you need to cover are really high so what i will ask you to do is start preparing well third year is a very right time to start if you have just entered the third year this is the perfect time to start preparing for gre uh prepare your resumes get done with your like uh, get start getting good grades in your uh, semesters do your practicals well your practicals are really going to help you be it job or anything uh, we might think that uh, whatever you are going to study in college is not going to be of any use but trust me it's going to be of every use in your office so that's actually the base which you are going to be developed on so make sure that you are uh, this is the right time to prepare for gre start preparing start taking the exams gr is expensive i know but uh, if you are not getting a good grade in the first time doesn't matter you can take it next time you can take it how many other times you want until you have the money so it will be really it uh, to take it at least two times make sure that you take multiple practice tests um, before you are going to take the actual gr exam make sure that you have at least taken 20 full gr tests with a complete time because gre is a stressful test it's going to take 4 hours 20 minutes for test to complete and there is going to be a hell lot of sections it's going to be irritating uh, it will be mentally tiring so be prepared for it and uh, just few things about the gre test centers you will be given a system and it will be covered in all the sites there will be a camera facing you and there will be a hell lot of cameras uh, even if you want to use the restrooms you need to ask multiple permissions and uh, going to restrooms is a very big process in gre and uh, not only about that they will if you need water you need to raise your hands and get water from that so it's going to be really tiring test so make sure that you are all prepared before going into the hall just see few videos how exactly a gre examination hall looks and what exactly happens in the gre examination hall and then you are good to go so i'm up for questions do you people have any questions so if you are again going to ask the links yeah i will forward it to you there is nothing to be worried about uh i will just start uh, like as soon as the session ends i will send a mail to kathi and sir and uh, it will be forward to you people so that you can start using it uh, so this is my linkedin uh, name so if you go and search for muttu kumaravi uh, i'm alumni of panimal engineering college so you can find using that too or if you want to mail me you can mail me to muttu kumaravi.mutramanjgmail.com yeah we can get in touch so thank you guys for uh, attending the session uh, yeah thanks So do we have any question